that he's having now, it took place at night. At night. As it began to dawn towards the next day, because now, remember now, the darkness now represents the negative part of Jacob. And when the day arose now, we have Jacob now walking in the light of Torah. Prior to any other time, Jacob was walking now in the, uh, on, on, in, on the dark side. So he's wrestling now with this messenger here now, and when it dawns for the new day, the new day represents the light or the enlightening part of Jacob where he's no longer disagreeable, where he's now agreeable. Now, he's wrestling with a literal man um, where we have the father. The way that is 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 red is looking like where Jacob is actually beating up Yahuwah Elohim. Is that Jacob has the father in, in the headlock or, or in the sleeper hole? I mean, this is not, I, don't get, I don't get that out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, but what we're trying to gather here now, this is a struggle. Mm -hmm. The person of interest here is Jacob. There's something that Jacob has to learn. Jacob and his mother, they got together and they and they um, and they tricked their father. They took advantage of Isaac when he was old. He's blind. It even got to the point where, where um, Esau is, excuse me, Isaac is questioning Jacob. He said, Who are you? The voice is Esau, but the voice sounds like Jacob. And the first conversation that Jacob is having with um, his father Isaac, he says, who are you? The conversation is limited. He says, um, my father. Because he didn't want to have a whole conversation with his father, because if he was to do that now, he could be able to recognize his voice. And so I just, I just found it interesting now, because I just cut it kind of short. But tell me now, because I don't want to go too far into this. What did you get out of the wrestling that happened with Jacob and, and the angel? Well, I got out of it that, that as for the, him wrestling with the angel, that uh, the angel could have took him at any time. Mm -hmm. He just wrestled with him so that he could, uh, as you say, uh, uh, you know, wrestling with him so that he could actually, uh, you know, I don't know what it is, I guess go through whatever he had to go through, whatever he had to him whatever, but at the end of the day, he, the angel touched his thigh, mm -hmm. and when he touched his thigh, he was, you know, so I, I never, through all these years, I've never come to the conclusion that maybe he was either wrestling with God, mm -hmm. or that he was wrestling with, uh, I figured he was wrestling with an angel, I never figured that he ever had the upper hand at any time, mm -hmm. uh, or any Because time. the messenger just said, let me go. Right, I want you going and to he's like, I'm not gonna let you go. Right, but I didn't, I didn't get that. Uh, the angel couldn't have broke away at any time. You follow me? Right. So, which which it shows that he did do. So I I, I never got the conclusion that he was wrestling with himself. It was always that he was wrestling with with a, with a physical person or angel or something like that. Okay, I put it to you this way. I'm going to use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. Um. I wrestled, and we brought out the scriptures in Romans, the, um, the, I think it was the seventh chapter, where Paul did the same thing. He's wrestling. Mm -hmm. Anytime we're not following Torah, we're wrestling against the Father. I wrestle with, against the, with the Father every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm wrestling. But the goal now is to overcome, to transcend from one point to the next. When Jacob now was so... Um, steadfast in wanting the mercy. He, he wants this relationship with the Father. He wants it so bad. And the Father sees this because he spent 20 years right. with Laban. He learned his lesson. And so now he goes to the very person now that he betrayed and he's now coming to him now in a humble state. He wants to give him everything back that he, that he stole from him. Jacob learned his lesson. He divided up the camp. The name of the camp was called Mahanim, which means two camps. He understood the prophecies and everything. And if you look at Jacob, after that walk, after that thing that he went through with Laban, he walked an upright life from thereafter. Mm -hmm. So he learned. 
And so again, if you didn't understand it, that's fine. But what we wanted to share here tonight is that each one of us wrestles with the Father. Whenever you're not doing what the Father is asking you to do, you're wrestling with the Father. This is what you're doing. I get that. And so what we need to do now is stop wrestling with the Father, go into ourselves now, and look at things now from a more spiritual, uh, the spiritual principles behind the scriptures, because we always talked about the four levels of understanding Torah. We should now be at the point now where we, we should be at, let's say, at the side level. In the side level now, where, where we're now um, spiritual beings. But we lost that spirituality now when we see that uh, when Adam transgressed in the garden. And so now we have that duality that's, um, that's inside of us. Just like the cartoon, we would see the devil on one side of the shoulder and the angel on the other side. And, and, and the battle that's going on be, um, you know, between you know, these, these two decisions that we, that we might have to make. Mm -hmm. So um, if a person was to tell me that Jacob literally wrestled with a man, I, I wouldn't argue with him. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to share is that, you know what, this wrestling is a spiritual wrestle when the Father even gave us the negative and positivity of, of all of this in, in the first place. He said, listen, you know what? I set before you life, which is righteousness, and death. That's positive and negative. I'm asking you to choose life. If you don't choose life, you're going to struggle against me. The struggle is also when, um, when Paul was told, oh, why, kick you, why are you kicking against the stones? You, you can't do it. You're fighting me. Well, you, you, you can't. I created you. So that's where I'm at. And I pray that we can all see that. And, and, and again, I just saw all these numbers here. We didn't get into all of the numbers here with the 40s and everything like that. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood um, the spiritual applications of, of, of understanding the scripture. All right? Yeah. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's, let's close it up. So we can, uh, Go back into the physical work tomorrow <laughs> at, at, at our jobs. All right. I know um, one of the things that, that I don't want to get into is that uh, one of the things that we know um, when we look at the human torso, um, you get all of your strength from the lower part, like your legs. I mean, your thighs. That's that's your strength. And I'm not gonna go there. But they say that what, what happened is that when Jacob was not walking with the limp, that's an indicator now that he, if he was not able to overcome with his physical strength. Like, for example, um, Teddy Pendergrass, that's more like one of my favorite singers. But whenever you sing, you know that you have to bring up the, the, the sounds come from your diaphragm. But when he began to sing now after he was paralyzed, he, the, the pitch and, and the tones were different because he wasn't able to pull strength from his legs and from the diaphragm to actually get the sounds out. And so with Jacob, if a person told me to say, listen, you know what? It's because of the father touching his thigh or his hip and he's walking with the lip to show that it's not by strength or by might. It's going to be by the, the set apart spirit of, of the father. I would agree with that. I, I have no issues with that. So the wrestling, you're not going to be able to physically get this done. You're going to have to surrender the Torah, each and every last one of us. All right? So we're going to vote the show for our seven times. And uh, we're going to read um, Abraham's blessings, and we'll be done. We're going to pray. Yes, we're going to pray. First, I'm right, forgetting that. Okay, vote the show for our we are first.
Father, you are weak. We thank you for uh, such a dynamic lesson that you put on Murray Kasadova's heart and in his spirit. Father, we ask that everyone uh, receive understanding on what was taught tonight. Father, we just thank you, Father, that as we walk in your Torah, walk in the light, Father, that we become ever more uh, uh, understanding and ever more um, vigilant in our war, understanding that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Father. But this is a spiritual warfare that we're up against, Father. Absolutely. And that we must say no to the evil inclinations that we face on a daily basis that so that we may see your kingdom. Father, we just thank you for, for keeping us, your children, and, and, and every day, Father, giving us your favor, that your favor may be sufficient for us throughout the day. And as we live day by day, walking in your Torah, Father, we ask that you continue, Father, to barack us. We ask that you continue to keep us in our family. We ask that you continue, Father, to help us not to lean on our own understanding, but to lean on you. Because, like, the message was today, it is not by power, not by might, but it's by your Ruach HaKadosh, Father. We just thank you for those things that you're doing in us. We ask to continue, Father, to, to give us the wisdom, the fear of you, Father, the fear of you who is beginning of all wisdom. And we ask that you continue to give us that, that we may serve you rightly. Hallelujah. 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 Very good. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, oh. Amen. 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 Okay. Midbar, 6th chapter, verses 22 to 27. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aharon and to his son, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Yahshua, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless thee and keep thee. Yahuwah make his face shine upon thee, and he be favorable unto thee. May Yahuwah lift the his mountains upon thee, and give thee peace. Yahuwah and they shall put my name upon the children of Yahshua, and I will bless them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is tonight's class. Mishpachar, next week we're going to finish up to be the Father's will on the plagues.